I have had to deal with a lot on my own. So for me, um, I suppose this was what I did. Would I suggest that people go on their own for that diagnosis? No. I think even if it's a friend, um, then I think to hear that you need to be with somebody you can trust, somebody who can be there and listen. I think back myself to my diagnosis and I have certainly heard of others where they have been diagnosed and then, you know, I'll see you in a month or I'll see you in six months. Um, that's wrong. There's just no right about that. Um, and, I've, and I've met with a man, a very young man recently, who basically got the diagnosis and was let go home to... To, he was on his, his own to, to, to nothing really. Um, there needs to be signposts, there needs to be somebody there at that moment of diagnosis who will walk with you and your family. This isn't just about the person who's diagnosed. You know, you, you can have husbands and wives and I just, you know, so you have somebody who, who's, who's losing the person, you know, they love and, and probably don't know where to go for information or what to get or what's the next step. You can have a lot of knee-jerk reaction. So, oh my God, this is happening, let's do this. You have carers who overcare at, at early, especially with somebody with early onset, which isn't healthy for somebody diagnosed with early onset because you need to keep the brain challenging. So if I get this diagnosis and I have, you know, a partner or husband or, or, or whoever um, rowing in to take over and do for me, well then, it's quite easy to sit back and go, oh, well, I'm done for, I'm useless, I'm no good, somebody else has to take care, and, and slip quite easily into, into depression, which isn't helpful either. So people who know and understand need to be there to signpost what is good and healthy for both, you know, for the family as well. This, this to me isn't just a person diagnosed, to me the family is diagnosed with this. I believe that we should be given the information. I believe the word dementia and Alzheimer's should be used because I think in many cases we take our cue from the doctor. So if the doctors aren't going to be using these words um, and they're not going to be giving us the information, then they're making you know, a mystery out of it or they're, you know, it's appearing, uh, I suppose, worse than what it is. You know, there's no easy or nice or, you know, way to say it, but we need to be saying it because we need to be taking the stigma. Once you're diagnosed, your entire um, future plans, everything you thought was kind of normal. I mean, we can all go out and be killed on the road in any instant. Um, but everything from that moment becomes questionable um, as to whether A, you'll remember or B, cognitively aware, you know, how long do you have, you know, so uh, it changes in an instant. Um, but our doctors need to take a lead and they need to call it dementia. Doctors, you know, listen, listen to us, especially early onsetters. We have information. You've learned about this in a book. I'm living it. And I'm not being big headed there or I'm, not, I'm just saying there are so many things like I know I've trained my brain a bit in the last year through that thing of walking through a door and I've no concept of what's back there. I know I've put in little strategies that have helped me. Um, listen, listen. Together we can make a better path for the next people coming along. Um, sometimes they can be quite patronising and it's, you know, nearly, well, you have this now and so be it forever and a day and here's your medication and on you go. That's not it. We've years to go. I've years to go. Um, so listen. Listen a little bit, because we have information for you.